This is the Blackmagic Vision Mixer that we're using in our gallery at Barnfield College. I'm going to run through the basics of how to use it and any recommendations. So let's get started. We have two big monitors. One, the far left top one, that one shows you what you're actually recording at any one time. The one next to it is, as it says, the preview. This is the one that is set up to be shown after this one if you do an edit. The program is always shown on the main screen. This allows the director and anybody else in the room to be able to see exactly which one is being recorded at any one time. What is being recorded. And that is the program on this screen at all times. Below you have a monitor showing camera one, two and three. The fourth one is just the studio monitor, not to be used in the production. Just to give you an idea of if you're sitting in the room, if you're trying to spot somebody in the room, you can actually say to them, move over to the left or right if you've lost them. So that's to help you, you're not to film from it. On the bottom left, this is your media player one. This is where you put your graphics or photos or videos and have them set up ready to be used in the actual video. Media player two, it's the same as media player one. You get a choice of which one you have moving over to the next video. We won't go into key one or key DS, DSK one for now. So that's the big monitors. Now let's explain the vision, vision mixer. We do not need to be using these. These are if we've got cameras that we wish to remotely control ourselves. We do not have those sorts of cameras. So we do not need to talk about these. We don't use these. This just shows us what we are recording on the actual black magic box. We can adjust things on there, but basically just leave all the presets that it set up just now. Don't adjust. Next, I want to talk about these buttons just here. They're all presets, they're all set up. Please don't mess with them, just leave them alone. The most important ones are these sets of buttons just here and the mixing device that you can use to go between the cameras or graphics or videos that are preloaded all along here. So the top one is the most important one. This is the program, this is the live stream, this is what you are recording. Whatever you select here is what you are recording. Below here is everything that you've got set up to be moved to be on the program. So this is what we are viewing right now. We can change our buttons and we can move between things very easily and fluidly. If we want to have a different camera set up for us to move to, we press the button on the lower part, have it set up, then we can then mix over to it. We can either use the mixing device, which will mix between a different sort of transition that you choose, or you can just quite simply say cut, and it'll come straight over to it. Or you can simply say auto, and then it'll move to it. Okay, so this is the live one. This is what we're recording. This one is the video or graphics that you'll have set up about to be shown after this one. So this is all preset. So one, two, and three, these refer to the cameras. This is camera one, this is camera two, this is camera three. And as you can see, when I press one of the buttons, it immediately goes red, indicating that is the one that we are viewing at that time. It's identical below. That's the main thing you've got to understand, that these are identical. So that is camera one, camera two, and camera three. And I did say that there is a camera four there, but that is just the studio monitor. We don't use it. It's just to show you what's going on in the studio. So don't use that one. You have camera one, two, and three, and that's it. So let's say we're on camera one at the moment, and your director said to you, I want you to be on camera two straight afterwards to see a person's comment or whatever. So you press camera two to be ready, and you can either use the uh, dissolve device or the transition device to move between the two 
or you could use the auto which will just fluidly go you can change the time that it takes to do a transition and cut that is fairly simple it just cuts straight from one to the other doesn't do anything else quite simply cut which is basically the same as using one of these to so just go straight over to it yeah bam 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 okay now up the top here you have a lot of choices to change the transition that you're using at the moment we are using the mix one which is a sort of cross dissolve if we wanted to we could use the square one so we could click on that one and then transition through and you'll see the squares coming now you can leave it halfway but it looks a bit peculiar so perhaps not get used to actually using it and doing it at a certain speed flip over and we can go for a corner one and it'll just go flip 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 there are an awful lot of very good fun funky transitions to go through you can choose which ones you want okay I'm going to go back to mix because that's my favorite one so your vision mixer you must choose in your script which transition you'd like to be using and when and prepare it to do that so that's your transitions there a lot of lovely transitions now we have some other things here we have this two shift buttons and if you push on the shift button and hold it down you can then go through to the media player one or media player two I've put a graphic and a couple of photographs in here just to show you as an example so I want to have media player one next so I press shift and MP one and you can see now in my preview it has uh, the graphic with Barnfield College and now I can do a transition over to that graphic let's just say I want to do a transition over to MP2 and I've got a photograph there instead move the transition through and I've gone from Barfield College to a stills photograph of one of our students uh, in a video production then we can easily press to come back into normal cameras so let's say we want to swap over to camera 2 we can then easily say right I've set up camera 2 and I can then scroll and then I can transition over to camera 2 and then let's say I want to get over to camera 1 I'm going to use the auto this time it will then automatically go over to camera 1 so that's the vision mixer there are an awful lot more things in here but that's the basics to get us all started with to start creating uh, great vision visual mixes one of the other jobs of the vision mixer is to make sure that the program is recorded to record our live programs we use one of these a black magic box that will record full HD videos and you can either record it onto uh, one of two SD cards that are left in this black box at all times it's fairly easy and simple to use as you could probably guess when we're ready to start recording and everybody's in position you press the record button immediately it shows you that it's recording it shows you it's recording in 1080 23 and it shows you that it is recording on one at the moment and it will automatically flip over to the second SD card if needed the time on here is indicating that we've been recording other programs on this SD card so hence it's not zero zero when they have finished the actual production the live broadcast all you have to do is to press stop and the program is finished then when you need to transfer the footage you push on the SD card it pops out slightly and out it comes the first SD card slot is the 128 the second one is a 64 gig needless to say they go in carefully there's only one way for them to go in with the picture facing that way do not try to force them in the wrong way the usual warning this is now ready to record again do note 
that it will record on card two first because I put f card two in first. You can either switch it over or you could just remove card two, push it back in. Now it's indicating it will record onto card one, which is probably the best one to always use anyway, because that's the larger one if needed. That's our super little black magic box recording onto 1080, 23.98 frames per second. We could go into the menus and adjust its recording quality, but please let's just leave it at 1080 as that's what we generally use anyway.